Hello everybody. I had a good idea that I thought I would share with you guys. There's my doggy and my shadows, plural. So right now it's almost March in Las Vegas, Nevada. I've adapted to the cold over the winter and I really don't want to let it go. Sure, when the sun is up, I go out and I tan, I worship the sun. But what I think I'm gonna do is, see these raindrops? Rare for Las Vegas. Yeah, so. I'm gonna become nocturnal to a point. Like, I could spend six to eight hours a night walking around empty parks with my doggy. This is like, she's having a fall. Sophie, up! Up! Come here! And I am as well. So the spring is coming and uh, then it's going to get hot as, it's going to get hot. I can't adapt to the heat that quick and I don't want my skin to become all leathery and shit. Like my, my tank is pretty full on the, the sunlight energy. So. I, I mean, I, I lived in Portland, Oregon, and Gresham, and Eugene, and Salem, and Valencia, and Florence, and all those places. The Willamette Valley, I, I don't know if this is true, but Willamette is Indian, I don't know what tribe, but for Willamette, the Valley of Sickness. Yeah, I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to double check that. But uh, oh, <laughs> look what I just found, Sophie! This is your toy that we left here like a week ago. Hey. <laughs> so, like the Buddha said, or I don't know who said it, but like words of wisdom. Eat when tired, sleep when hungry. No, that's, no. Switch that. <laughs> Good girl. So, I used to be big on the circadian rhythm. You know, when there's light, you're awake. When it's dark, you go to sleep. But humans, I'm pretty sure humans have done all of their best work in the dark. Like, sure, there's the writing the books and charting the stars, using the imagination. There's also the making the babies. So, yes, even though, hey. <laughs> so, so even though there's oh, oh yeah making the babies mostly happens in the dark yeah so I'm a sun worshiper I think I'm going to tone it down a little bit though and uh, maybe start becoming a let me see if I can do this moon worshiper Hey, all things are possible, right? There's a time and a place for everything. Sophie! I love you. <laughs> yeah. So... Uh, uh, I might actually get a computer to make it easier for me to edit these videos and shit. Because I had a good dog advice thing so 
like with her I so I spend like 24 hours a day with her I feed her and water her um, I also try and run away from her <laughs> get away doggy <laughs> Yeah, so uh, oh, that wasn't a very uh, co comprehensive how-to video of how to bond with your dog. But yeah, she follows me everywhere. Also, I think this is important as well. When I was young, I remember having the thought, like young as in like uh, prepubescent. Uh, before 13, 14, um, I remember seeing vagabonds, wanderers, homeless guys walking with their dog without a leash, and the dog walked with them. And I was like, oh, my dog isn't like that. I grew up with a Boston Terrier. He was not trained at all. He ended up uh, escaping out of our yard, getting picked up by a car. The people in the car tried to sell him to a lady. The lady saw that it was stolen, so she said no. This is the story anyway. And uh, so they threw my doggy, his name was Buster Brown. They threw my doggy into the back of her yard and there was a boxer and a husky and some other type of big dog and they just ripped it apart. But thankfully, like, somehow the lady came out and saved Buster, and I got to uh, spend the, the next two weeks of his life with him. I, like, I had to change the cheesecloth bandages off of him, because I, just flies. I shouldn't be on the open wounds. I comforted him, and I I really tried to make. I knew he was dying. Man, I wish I could figure out exactly how old I was then. I was still in Denver, so I had to been under the uh, under twelve. Uh. But yeah, I spent my first two weeks doing, my first job was fucking hospice. I've done that again for my father figure. I wish I could take care of my parents before they pass away. I don't even know if they're alive. That's the thing about being shunned. You know, I was Jehovah's Witness. My parents, you know, born me into it. Sophie, what you smelling? Yeah. I'm I'm still thinking about it. Even after they pass away, I will still be thinking about it. But I do want to have one last chance to see my mother and father again. They raised me really well. I have a whole uh photo album of my childhood I'm gonna get it uh, digitized what's that company I don't remember but there's my doggy this might be a long video Sophie you still wanna hey come on hey come here She knows where her home is. The first three months that I had her, we were living out of my rucksack. <laughs> Random shit falling out of my my van. Uh, trash. Uh, yeah, I gotta. 
I'm kind of glad that was all dark and you couldn't see everything that was in there. Because, uh, it's gotten a little bit messy. Not like hoarder messy, but winters are always hard for me, have been. It's when I hunker down and I don't move much. All right, I could talk to you guys all night because it feels like there's always perfect lighting. There's the perfect temperature. I have the perfect wardrobe. I need a mic. Not, nah, I don't need shit. No, yeah, uh, not nah, everyone needs somebody something this is where I'm at I think uh, for my next haircut what am I I'm gonna be 40 in a week so I should have a 40 year old haircut right yeah I'm just gonna let it grow for a while. All right, 12 minute. Oh, that's good. 12 minutes to end on. Bye.